I'm Dustin Zahn, and this is Common Sense Records Presents. CSR Presents. Well, I mean, I got in yesterday, so it's it's been short, but I've been here multiple times, also Mexico City, and I really love it here. Um, I kind of wish I had more time, but I, I just don't on this trip, but uh, <laughs> I've been making it worth it. Got some good food already. Well, there's times when you have, like, maybe the gig's not so good, <laughs> or there's not so many people, but... You have that special meal and you're like, you know what? This is worth it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think, you know, I moved there in 2011. And I think Berlin's a little more different these days. It's still cheaper than most European capitals. Um, but it, it's definitely more expensive now. And you have to work a little more and a lot harder to to get by there whereas back then it wasn't so necessary um so the idea of like moving to berlin to build your career i don't think it's so important anymore i, I recommend it if you want to go and just experience it uh it's it's great to visit or to party or anything like that i you know i think a lot of people i've seen move to berlin and not get so much work done <laughs> That was me for a while. Now, now I'm working quite a lot in the studio. But um, I ended up going because I was already doing these sort of like two months here, two months there sort of tours in, in Berlin. And uh, at the time, it was starting to become a bit much. And I actually went through a breakup in a long-term relationship. So I, I had a completely free slate. I could do whatever I want. So I thought... Let's just go to Berlin and try it out. And I, I thought I would go for one year, maybe. Uh, you know, I remember even telling friends like, ah, oh, don't worry, I'll be back in a year. Because to me, it just seemed absurd that, you know, I would be able to survive solely off of music. But I kind of already was before I arrived, which honestly, I think is uh, something really important that people don't talk about when you talk about moving to a, a city for a specific industry, in this case being Berlin. Um, it's a lot easier to get by when you already have gigs and a little bit of money in the bank account. It was really exciting. I mean, uh, I came at a good time. You know, uh, obviously back then, Bergheim was really important. Still is. Uh, but that was when things were really on fire and things were special. You know, the industry was kind of coming out of that moment where it was like a lot of minimal and Ibiza Tech House type stuff. And... You know, you'd have people like, you know, Ben Clock and Detman and Roman Fluel and all those people really just blowing up and crushing it. Uh, I musically really identify with that kind of sound a lot more. It's more stripped down and there's this tension. It's more of a journey and, and groovy. And that, that really kind of, to be honest, I, I resonate more with that than I do with what's happening today. Um, and... You know, it was really interesting because I would go and do my gigs on Fridays and Saturdays, wherever in Europe. And I, I wouldn't really have time to like, let's say, party in Berlin or even at those clubs I was at because I had to go to the airport. So my only opportunity was, all right, let's go out Sunday. What's still open? And back in the day, Berghain, for example, it was not open late. It was open only until like the morning or maybe noon or something. And then it would slowly stay open later and later and that's when you would start to see a lot of like the first marathon sets of people like Ben Clock and, and all those guys and that was really special moments really crazy shit and uh, you know I was there for all that so I was, I was really lucky and uh, you know it's different than today because I think the world was a little bit more optimistic at that point and these days there's a lot of trouble and like you know people it's it's more expensive to go out like when people go out it's there's a lot of baggage that they're carrying to a party at least that's what i kind of feel and uh so i don't know i'm, I'm missing the sort of optimism that was back then but then again i'm older now maybe maybe the youth have this i i don't really see it i don't know short answer no um I mean, there are things that interest me. I think musically what I'm into right now, especially with techno, is a bit more on this like sound design leaning tip, really kind of mental and pulsating and uh, reminds me of like kind of the early 90s sort of 
you know, maybe like Plastic Man type vibes, but in a more modern approach. You know, I think of labels like Semantica and whatnot and DJs like Nobu or Wade Garashi. Um, I, I think otherwise at the moment, there's stuff that I like. There's fun records in techno, but, uh, you know, I've been doing this. This is my 25th year, so I've, I've kind of seen and heard it all. And uh, right now the, the tribal techno stuff is back. They're calling it hard groove these days. And I mean, Ben Sims used to be a god to me. I mean, he still is, but like I, I loved, uh, you know, these three turntable like vinyl sets with all the Congo Bongo shit. And uh, I still like that stuff. And people are starting to put those records out again, which is fun and cool. But it's actually the same drum loops from... 20 to 25 years ago so that's slightly less exciting but cool that the younger people are into it well i'm all for it and first of all it's inevitable whether we like it or not it's happening you know what i mean um i'm all for it i mean like the pessimist in me is like great i can't wait for ai to come around and wipe out the musicians because so many of them have these big egos and they're not that special anyway uh but I mean, no, like seriously, uh, I think there's really interesting benefits to AI. I've already done projects where we've used AI maybe more as like, let's say a musician in the band rather than writing the whole song. And uh, I think it's an exciting way to see how things develop. I mean, does it put my career uh, in question? Like if, can I make money off of this because of computer technology taking over or all of the music industry yeah probably but i mean it, that part sucks but also i make music because i love to make music and it's fun and i like to jam out with other musicians so you know i don't really care if it kind of gets rid of my job i, I already kind of got a taste of that with covid things went down a bit and i realized like life can still be pretty amazing after techno and clubs so I, I hope I get to continue to do it, but I'm, I'm actually more optimistic about things with AI than, than most people. I mean, the label, you know, it started off as this sort of uh, platform for like really late night, moody, vibey music. And the interesting thing about that is there's no one way that this has to go. For example, I've had mini log records on my label, which is very bouncy and bright and beautiful and just you know silly journey and then i've had you know more recently things like uh marsal which is just like very nihilistic drummy rotating sort of grooves and these all these things could really apply to that late night sort of vibe um these days i my most important thing that i'm looking for is that it has a sense of timelessness i don't i don't mind if it's a current sound but i don't want it to have a sound that's so trendy that it will obviously be two years from now a record that nobody wants to hear because it's just too much like 2023 um so that's the first part of it and the second part is i guess when i i, I really want to i want to push my friends these days you know what i mean and if i really like what they're doing and i have the opportunity to push them that i'm willing to do it if I was to focus solely on people that I don't know and spend all the money and resources that I have on the label on these people, it would, I think it would kind of sink the label because we don't have this connection and I don't know if those people are gonna have the loyalty back to me. You really have to trust each other in this relationship because the, the margins for how much it costs to produce a record and how much you can actually make on it is so low that it's a, it's a tightrope that you have to walk. And uh, I think I've, I've figured out what works for me. And of course, everything is liquid, so it will have to change with time. But, you know, those are the two most important factors, I think. I am keeping busy. You know, I don't, some people that keep up with me know that my studio was robbed last year. I lost everything. Uh, bought a lot of synthesizers and stuff like that again. And it was brutal, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm sort of back on my feet. I just haven't had time to write anything or well, I have had it, but not a lot. So I'm, I'm working on music right now with Marsal and Blank. I probably have a solo record at some point. I'd like to do an album. Um, and I have a, uh, 
Well, I have two tracks on a sort of pop R&B type album that's coming on Def Jam in July, but now that I think about it, I, I don't know if they announced it yet, and I don't want those lawyers uh, getting down my throat. But if you're interested in, in something that's not techno, follow my channels and I'm sure I'll blab about it. Las conversaciones que definen lo más relevante de la historia y la cultura del techno. CSR presents. CSR presents. Una producción de Warp y Common Sense Records. <música>